Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Connecticut Against Gun Violence Youth Council's vigil um, to remember those lost in the Parkland shooting three years ago today. Uh, we are lucky enough to be joined by two state legislators, survivors of gun violence, those directly uh, affected by gun violence in, in many ways. Um, we will hear their stories, remember the names and the people who lost their lives that day and learn about how gun violence continues to affect those across Connecticut and across the country in many different ways. Um, so first, if you'll join me in the reading of the names of those lost on that day uh, three years ago. Alyssa Alhadef, 14. Scott Beagle, 35. Martin Duque, 14. Nicholas Dorette, 17. Coach Aaron Feist, 37. Jamie Gottenberg, 14. Chris Hickson, 49. Luke Hoyer, 15. Carl Logron, 14. Keen Oliver, 17. Gina Montalto, 14. Elena Petty, 14. Helena Ramsey, Alex Schachter. Carmen Shentrup, 16 and Peter Wang, 15. If uh, you'll join us in hearing from Sari Kaufman, she was a student at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas and she is now a Yale freshman. Hello everyone. Like my, Matt said, my name is Sari Kaufman and I was a sophomore when the shooting happened at my school, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. Um, I remember the day like it was yesterday, um, it was a normal day. It was Valentine's Day. I was excited to receive a carnation from one of my friends. Um, stressed about a Spanish test. I had lacrosse practice afterwards. Um, but around 2.20, um, at the end of the day, I was in my debate class and the fire alarm went off um, and we went outside just like normal fire drill. Um, but when we were outside, we heard five sounds that sounded like gunshots, but in Parkland, you know, similar to communities in Connecticut, it's one of the safest communities in, in Florida. Um, so, you know, we didn't think much of it when we heard the sounds. And then I started getting texts and Snapchat videos from my friends who were inside the building. Um, and it was videos of students and teachers getting shot. Um, and at the same time, you know, my memory is definitely a blur from that day. But at the same time, I remember my teacher saying, this is not a drill and police officers running uh, to us to tell us to keep running um, and run away from our school. So luckily I, I was fortunate and I was able to run away from the chaos that was happening inside my school. Um, and I got to a local restaurant and I remember watching what was developing at my school on every single major news channel um, and seeing that my fifth period English class, I was subjected to the terror of that day and um, two students actually died in that classroom. And afterwards, I didn't know what to do. I was only 15 years old and I'm still processing it today. But what I saw as the easiest thing to cope with what happened um, and to make sure that my classmates didn't die in vain was to go right into action. So a week later, we went up to Tallahassee to lobby legislators for common sense gun safety bills. And then about a couple of days after that, I got asked to plan the Parkland March for Our Lives. Um, so I just put all of my grief into action and all my time and energy into planning the March in Parkland with a few other student leaders. Um, and it was definitely a weird time because I was so excited that the march was you know, very successful and we were able to register so many voters. But then at the same time, all of this was happening because of what happened at my school. Um, and at the march, you know, I realized that a lot of people didn't necessarily know that there were midterm elections coming up or who they were voting for into office. Um, so I saw that as an opportunity to start a nonprofit on civic. Uh, focus on civic and voter education. So since then I've been doing that and also you know, the obvious issue of gun violence and how it doesn't affect just communities like Parkland, but uh, what happened at Parkland, those six minutes happen every single day uh, in 
you know, different communities that don't get as much attention. Uh, so since then, I've been on the board for Students Demand Action and have been a volunteer with Students Demand and now uh, with Connecticut Against Gun Violence, um, as now I'm a resident of Connecticut since I go to Yale. So I'm really excited to continue the work of gun violence prevention and on this day um, to really remember you know, what happened at my school. I know three years afterwards, people seem to forget sometimes or um, maybe not even wanna remember what happened, but it is crucial for us to continue to share our stories and for people to continue to talk about Parkland and the gun violence that goes on every single day um, because we're not gonna be able to make a change if it's not on the national stage. Uh, so uh, today, I, you know, I definitely encourage you to take time to remember what happened and then also make sure you're talking about the issue of gun violence and telling your legislators to pass specific bills, calling your congressmen and congresswomen um, to continue to advocate for gun safety because that's how we're gonna create the most change and ensure uh, school shootings like mine and gun violence that happens every single day doesn't continue to happen. Thank you very much, sorry. Um, I cannot imagine what that day would have been like to be there um, and your personal impact. And um, But we, we thank you for turning that grief into action. Um, and like you had said, gun violence takes many forms, whether it be media grabbing mass shootings or even community level gun violence that happens every day in the streets across America. And uh, someone to speak to the other and unfortunately less spoken about side, but all the same importance is Janet Rice. Black and brown youth are greatly impacted by gun violence. I was impacted by gun violence eight years ago uh, when I lost my only child uh, to, to gun violence 55 days before Sandy Hook, the Sandy Hook shooting. I remember it like it was yesterday. Um, Shane was um, picking up money from someone that he was selling a car to and he got into an argument, a verbal altercation with someone else and it turned physical then fatal. And that took about seven minutes. And he died fighting for his life in surgery at Hartford Hospital. Um, it's important to remember um, gun violence victims. Uh, for me, it's important for me to remember because it, it, it makes my fight that much stronger to um, prevent gun violence in the black and brown communities. And this, this, is, this is what I'm here for today. Um, right now, we at Connecticut Against Gun Violence is building a youth council. And if you are a young person or you know of a young person, um, we're looking for anyone to, to get involved. We need your voices. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. Um, like she had said, uh, just 55 days before Sandy Hook, which garnered international media attention, she had lost her own son. Um, and in, two, in 2020, over 200 Connecticut residents lost their lives due to gun violence in many forms, whether it be suicide, community level gun violence. It, it takes many forms and it is not talked about enough. Um, and we, all, we have to remember everybody, not just those who make it into the news. Um, and some people tasked with remembering it the most and doing the most about it are our state legislators. And I'm happy that we have two here with us tonight uh, to, to talk about um, ways that change can happen um, and ways that they have been involved themselves. So I'm honored to introduce uh, Senator Will Haskell. Thank you so much, Matt. Thanks to Connecticut Against Gun Violence for bringing us together. Um, Thank you, sorry, for sharing your story about what you, what you experienced um, that day three years ago. 
and and Janet, I'm so tremendously sorry for your loss, and I'm I'm grateful for your advocacy and how you've channeled that grief into into reform. Um, I have the honor of representing seven suburbs in Fairfield County. I also have the privilege of being the youngest member of the Connecticut General Assembly. And in addition to representing the 100,000 people in my district, I try to make sure that the next generation always has a seat at the table. When I visit classrooms, whether it's middle school classrooms, elementary school, not, well, high school classrooms really, and college classrooms, I hear time and time again from young people that when they hear a loud noise in the hallway, they're so focused on where they would hide in the event of a school shooting that they can't possibly focus on what's happening, uh, what they're supposed to be learning on their desk. My two and a half year old niece is now in a, a preschool program. Even she is participating in uh, gun, uh, in, in school shooter drills. And I think what, what we're uh, falling into is this sort of numb, complacency about the the yearly and what really is a daily toll of gun violence in our communities. Sometimes it's well-publicized incidents at schools. Sometimes, tragically, these losses don't make the headlines, but every life lost is, is, is a is a absolute unspeakable and unacceptable tragedy. We have to resist against that complacency and a lot of that resistance, thanks to the young people who are speaking up, thanks to uh, my, my colleagues who represent urban communities that fight uh, the plight of gun violence on a daily basis, that resistance is happening on the state level because while we know that the NRA has a tight grip on Washington, D.C., uh, the state government can can fulfill Justice Brandeis's long ago promise that, that uh, states serve as laboratories of democracy. We've got to serve as more than just laboratories of democracy. We've got to be laboratories of compassion and courage and standing up to the NRA. That's why I was really proud uh, that we passed three strong gun bills in the last legislative session, thanks to the help of this group. We passed two safe storage requirements and a ban on ghost guns, but there is a lot more work that needs to be done from modernizing our red flag laws to making sure that individuals can't buy uh, multiple uh, guns, bulk purchase handguns and a single purchase and then sell those guns into the illegal market. There's so much work to do that lies ahead. So I'm excited to partner with all of you and excited to partner with the next speaker, uh, my colleague, Representative um, uh, Rehab Ali Brennan. Okay, thank you for the intro. Um, thank you, Matt. Um, sorry, Eli um, and Janet. Um, Janet, and sorry, just thank you for sharing your stories. I think your strength is what really fuels um, our advocacy. Um, I'm Rehab Ali Brennan. I'm the state representative for the second district, which includes my hometown of Bethel, um, parts of Danbury, parts of Reading, and part of Newtown. Um, obviously that's a heavy weight to have on you. Um, but I do think like in listening to Sari and, and to Janet, you don't, I don't think gun violence has to have affected you personally for you to, to stand up and, and make a change. Um, you have a responsibility. And so when something goes on in your community or you hear of something, you know, it's up to you to speak up. And I think, um, a lot of people, we feel like it's on our, it's not up to us to, to voice an opinion on something if, if it hasn't impacted us. And, and that's not true. I think people need to get more comfortable in expressing what they see is wrong um, in their community and in the world. Um, I feel like Parkland was only three years ago, but it feels like it was so long ago. I think a lot of us are kind of fatigued by just like keeping up the fight, um, what was going on at the national level, um, and also, you know, racial uh, justice um, protests this this summer. Just focusing on so many on so many important issues, um, I feel like we kind of get to a lull, or we're like, what can we be doing more to keep up the momentum? And I appreciate you guys by doing this and highlighting um, the Parkland victims and the fight to uh, make sure that there are no more. Um, and so I think you know, there's very little things you can do to keep it going. It's um, you know, obviously by doing this today, we're we're taking a chance to highlight the issue, but. You know, I think some people think that they have to go and speak um, at the state capitol. It doesn't have to be that, um, you know, serious. I think a lot of people can utilize their own social media pages. Um, you have your own platform, and I think people um, should take charge of that. Um, one thing I would comment is that, you know, change does happen. It takes time. But when I ran in 2016, um, I remember I had literature that spoke about gun violence, and nobody wanted to hear about it. They didn't want to see it. Um, they didn't want to talk about it. And after Parkland, when I ran in 2018, um, you know, there were people at the door that were asking, asking me directly about that question. And I'd seen the shift change um, in the second district, at least, and the Newtown area 
um, regarding the issue. I think people were kind of wanted to keep it aside. They didn't want to address it. And now it was like, okay, we have to make a change. And so a lot of those voices came from, from youth um, pushing that. And so, you know, your voice does matter. Um, sometimes the road is long, um, but we have to keep at it. And so I appreciate you guys bringing us together today to highlight that we still have more to go. Um, thank you. Thank you, Rahib. Uh, thank you, Sari. Thank you, Will. Thank you, Janet. And thank you, everyone at CAGV for helping uh, continue to fight against gun violence in all forms. Um, it is Valentine's Day. It is February the 14th. Uh, while it is meant to be a happy day for many, unfortunately for many, it is also a very sad day. And it is important we remember how empowered we were after the Valentine's Day three years ago and what action occurred after that. Millions of students across the country marched in their state capitals. They walked out of their schools. They went to their legislators. They pushed for legislation in their towns, their states, and in the nation's capital. But we should also remember that Lots of people have those days throughout the year, much like Janet. We cannot forget those as well, and we should feel empowered and continue to feel empowered. If you get down about remembering the terrible effect of guns, remember how we come together after something occurs. We should continue to remember that and make sure no one else has to remember a day where they lost someone to gun violence. Thank you.